How effective are antibiotics for treating acne? Do antibiotics really work for acne treatment? Those are the questions that we're going to address today. Welcome, I'm Dr. Arthur Kolsky. I'm founder and medical director of Advanced Acne Institute, a dermatology practice that only treats acne. So we specialize only in the treatment of acne. So we like to bring you insights that we have in our daily practice and things that we see, trends that we see, questions that were asked by our patients. And we hope that you find some of this information useful from an educational standpoint. This is not meant to be medical advice. We're, we're not recommending treatment, but we're just giving insights into what we encounter in our daily practice at Advanced Acne Institute, where we focus only on treating acne. So in today's discussion, we're gonna talk about the use of antibiotics in treating acne. So how effective are they? Do they really work? So this is a common question that we encounter in our day-to-day -day practice. We have patients wanting to know how effective the antibiotics might be if they elect to use them for their treatment. And parents of teenagers wanna know if antibiotics are an appropriate choice. And this is a discussion that is commonly had. So the first thing we need to do is to understand how antibiotics work in treating acne. So acne is not an infection, so we're not using antibiotics to cure an infection. Acne is a degree of inflammation that has a lot of different factors at its roots. So let's just review those briefly so that we can understand better how antibiotics actually work. So if you look at the little openings on your skin and you take a microscope and look inside, you'll see a structure that is composed of a hair follicle and oil glands. So inside the pores, you have this type of a structure and the oil gland attaches to the hair follicle and they form a common opening onto the skin surface. And that's where you see the little opening on the skin when you look in the mirror. So deep inside this pore is where acne originates. So one of the first steps that occurs is the ability of hormones, certain hormones that are circulating in our bodies to turn on the oil gland. So that's how oil glands know that they're supposed to make oil. The, the hormones, together with other factors that are present as well, they influence the oil gland to begin production of oil. So this oil called sebum makes its way from the oil gland out through the opening onto the skin surface and it keeps our skin moist and hydrated. And that's important because dry skin is not healthy. So the skin relies on this oil production to be healthy. Now in acne production, what happens is this normal process gets distorted. And for reasons that we don't always understand, the hormones activate the oil gland to produce too much oil and it becomes very excessive. And the hormones also induce the oil gland to begin to close off at the surface, at the top, where the opening occurs onto the skin surface, the interaction of the hormones and other factors onto the oil gland and onto the structure of the pore begin to cause those that opening to close off. And that creates a different environment in the oil gland where bacteria can then grow and the bacteria grow excessively. And ultimately the whole process causes inflammation. And this inflammation is what ultimately leads to a pimple breaking out on the surface of the skin. So that's the process of acne formation. Now that process may be triggered by excessive hormones that occur in puberty as we become teenagers, or it might be because of some other reason that too many hormones of that type are being produced or the oil gland may be becoming too sensitive to the even normal values of hormones. So there are a lot of factors. There are many different steps in, the, in that process that we don't completely understand. But once acne forms, it's usually because of the inflammation that occurs in this type of a stepwise process. So where do antibiotics fit in this process? So antibiotics work normally for infections by killing bacteria. The antibiotic actually has a role in disrupting the ability of the bacteria to grow and the bacteria stop growing and the infection is cured. However, in acne, 
as I said, this is not an infection. This is an inflammation. So antibiotics also have the ability to reduce inflammation. Now, certain antibiotics are good at that. And we use certain types of antibiotics in dermatology to treat a variety of inflammatory conditions, even though there is no infection present. And it's the same for acne. So we use antibiotics because they have this anti-inflammatory capability. Now, the ability of these types of antibiotics to also kill the bacteria that are growing inside the acne-prone pores can also be a factor. It's not really well known how important that factor is in controlling acne, but it could be something of importance as well. So antibiotics have at least two different mechanisms that they could contribute to helping the skin improve when somebody has acne. Now, going back to what we described as the process of acne formation, remember that one of the first steps was the ability of hormones and other factors to trigger the oil gland to begin its overproduction of oil and to begin other changes that lead to acne formation. So if we use an antibiotic, what are we targeting? Well, we're targeting mostly inflammation and bacterial growth. So is that where acne has its roots? Not really. The roots are where the hormones and other factors begin to enhance the production of oil and all of the other changes in this oil gland that ultimately lead to acne formation. So if we use antibiotics, are we really using something that's getting to the root of the problem? Probably not. So there are other things that we could use that target more at the inception of acne rather than one of the symptoms. In other words, once acne begins to form and once inflammation sets in, then that's already a manifestation of the initial problem. So if we're using antibiotics, we're coming in later in the game and we're trying to influence the inflammation. We're trying to reduce the inflammation, reduce the bacterial growth, and ultimately hope that that is going to give us the results that we want in controlling our acne. So what are the realities of that? Well, some people do have good results using antibiotic treatment. Sometimes that works quite well for some people. It's usually a temporary effect though. Antibiotics are, are usually not a definitive treatment for acne. It's not a cure for acne. So when antibiotics work well, they can influence the acne process and they can reduce that inflammation so that some people even clear up. Their skin gets completely clear using antibiotics. Now that doesn't happen for everybody. A lot of people and probably the majority of people who are given antibiotics for acne probably don't have such great success. And at the Advanced Acne Institute, we see that quite commonly. We have a lot of patients that come to see us having been treated with antibiotics by other dermatologists and they're just not getting better. And that's a very common theme. So antibiotics are not a panacea. So we don't expect antibiotics to cure acne once and for all. Now they do have utility, however. So for example, Antibiotics can be a very useful tool when a patient can't use a different treatment for medical reasons, or when a patient is reluctant to use a more effective treatment because of concerns out of potential side effects. So antibiotics do serve a role. And what we find at Advanced Acne Institute, times when we rely on antibiotics would be in those circumstances. For example, a parent is concerned about using a more aggressive treatment and they want to start with something a little more comfortable for them. Now, most people are comfortable with antibiotics. They're used to antibiotics. Most people have taken an antibiotic before in their lives for some reason, an infection of some sort. So it's an easier treatment to initiate rather than going straight to something that's more aggressive. Another time that we like to use antibiotics is in situational circumstances. For example, somebody who is breaking out a lot because they're under a lot of stress. For example, they're taking exams at school or there's a life event that's very stressful or they're having stress at work. These are common scenarios when people tend to have acne breakouts because of the stress. And it's usually a short-lived occurrence. People usually don't continue to have that type of 
stressful situation for their whole lives. So it's a good place to strategically use an antibiotic because in those circumstances, we find that sometimes they can be very effective and we're only using them for a short period of time. Another time that we like to use antibiotics, if a patient comes to see us and they've never used any treatment before for their acne and it's their first time coming to the doctor to have a prescription therapy, sometimes an antibiotic is a good place to start. That's because we don't know if they're gonna have a good result or not. Some people, as I mentioned earlier, do have a very good result with antibiotics. But even though the majority of people, at least at the Advanced Acne Institute that we encounter, are not having the greatest results with antibiotic, some people do, and, and it's a good place to start as we're thinking about other options. And sometimes as we're preparing to use a stronger option, using an antibiotic first gives us a chance to assess its value and if it doesn't work, then we're in the preparation stages to use something stronger once we encounter an inability of the antibiotic to produce good results for us. So those are good times that we like to use antibiotics. Now, the least favorite time to use an antibiotic would be a patient who comes to us who's had acne for many years. They've tried a lot of things and nothing has really worked out for them. In those types of situations, we find that we would prefer to talk about other options that might be more effective than antibiotics. Also, we don't like to use antibiotics for very long periods of time. Now, we encounter patients sometimes who have been seeing other doctors and they've been receiving antibiotic treatment for over a year, some of them two years, some of them three years. And we don't tend to share that comfort level using an antibiotic for such a long time. As a matter of fact, in acne treatment, in dermatology, we tend to like to use antibiotics for a much shorter time. And if they're not effective, then we move on to something that has a better chance of working. So antibiotics do serve a role. They're typically not a long-term solution for, for most patients. However, at times they can be effective. They do have their usefulness, but we're always thinking a step ahead. When we decide to use an antibiotic, we're always thinking a step ahead because if it doesn't work, we wanna know that we have a different option available to us that might be more effective. So that's a summary of some of our thoughts about antibiotics at Advanced Acne Institute. There are a lot more things to talk about with antibiotics. There are a lot more circumstances when they might be appropriate. There are side effects of antibiotics. There are secondary effects of antibiotics that may not be beneficial there are other times when antibiotics would be appropriate. So it's a discussion that every patient needs to have with their doctor to decide if antibiotics are appropriate for their circumstances before they make the decision on what, what treatment is right for them. So that's a brief summary of some of the considerations that we have at Advanced Acne Institute and some of our experiences using antibiotics in acne treatment. But there, there's a lot more to the story and there are a lot of other effects that antibiotics can have. There are side effects that antibiotics can have. There are benefits that antibiotics can have. So it's a discussion that every patient should have with their own provider to decide whether antibiotics are right for them or whether another treatment is more appropriate.